After decades of traversing in deep space, the Voyager probes still send back signals to Earth. While scientists at NASA eagerly await new data from the probes, sometimes disaster strikes. Recent reports state that one of the Voyagers has sent back a frightening signal to Earth, which has left scientists scrambling for answers. Let's take a closer look. The Voyager program is an American scientific program developed by NASA that launched in 1977. The mission consists of two robotic space probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. The scope of the mission was to study the outer part of the solar system and gain knowledge about the outer planets and their moons. At first, the mission was quite simple. Voyager 1 had to study the planetary systems of Jupiter and Saturn, and Voyager 2 had to study Uranus and Neptune. Currently, the Voyager space probes are exploring the outer boundary of the heliosphere in interstellar space. As a result of their success, the mission has been extended three times as they continue to transmit useful scientific data. It was confirmed that on August 25, 2012, Voyager 1 had become the first man-made object to exit the solar system and enter interstellar space. A few years later, it was also confirmed that Voyager 2 also indicated it would enter interstellar space in 2018. The Voyager space probes are powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators, a type of nuclear battery. This is a type of battery that is perfect for missions needing energy over a long period of time, which would be too long for fuel cells or batteries, and that can't rely on solar energy. It allows us to organize very long missions to happen. As such, it's predicted that the batteries will no longer be functional from 2032 on, about 55 years after the launch of the space probes, which is quite remarkable. However, as time passed by, various functions and systems of the probes had to be switched off to keep the main system in working order. Consequently, they'll be able to keep their current set of scientific instruments on until 2025. The space probes were initially conceived as part of the Mariner program, whose purpose was to launch various robotic interplanetary probes from 1962 to 1973 to investigate Mars, Venus, and Mercury. But as their mission has been changed to go study Jupiter and Saturn, they were removed from the Mariner program. At first, they kept their original name and were called the Mariner Jupiter-Saturn Space Probes. However, due to their evolution from the Mariner space probes, their name was quickly changed to Voyager. This new program took over many elements of the Grand Tour program. As indicated by its name, the Grand Tour program, developed by NASA, aimed to send two groups of robotic probes to all the planets part of the outer solar system, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune. Yet this program was deemed too expensive at around $1 billion. Consequently, it was canceled and replaced with the Voyager program. For this reason, the Grand Tour program had a major influence on the Voyager program, as it fulfilled a lot of the planned objectives for the Grand Tour, except for a visit to Pluto. The Voyager program used the favorable alignment of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, which occurs only once every 175 years and was set to happen in the late 1970s. The space probes used gravitational assist, namely the use of the relative movements and gravity of a planet or other astronomical object to alter the path and speed of a spacecraft, and thus saving propellant and reducing expense. Through gravity assistance, it's possible to either accelerate the spacecraft, decrease its speed, or redirect its path. While Voyager 2 was launched first on August 20th, 1977, Voyager 1 was launched on September 5th, 1977 on a faster and shorter trajectory. Originally, the Voyager space probes were to conduct close-up studies of Jupiter and Saturn and their larger moons. As this mission was a real success, and as the probes were in good condition, scientists decided to go and explore Uranus and Neptune. The Voyager space probes made it possible to recover a lot of data and photographs of the most distant planets, thus allowing scientists to have precise details, which were, until then, still unknown, about the four giant planets and their moons. For instance, we were able to observe Jupiter's cloud forms and its wind and storm systems, as well as to discover the volcanic activity on its moon, Io. It was the first time that active volcanoes had been seen on another body in the solar system. It was also discovered that 7% of the upper atmosphere of Saturn is helium, and the rest is hydrogen. Titan, Saturn's largest moon, was also studied in depth. Among the major discoveries was the discovery of a magnetic field around Uranus and ten of its moons, and also the discovery of three rings and six unknown moons of Neptune. Furthermore, Voyager 1 and 2 sent us a lot of close-up photos of the giant planets. 
among them is the pale blue dot, taken in 1990 by Voyager 1. This famous photograph pictures planet Earth from a distance of about 6 billion kilometers. Planet Earth appears as a very small blue dot, lost in the vastness and greatness of space. As the main mission of the Voyager program was achieved in 1989, when Voyager 2 flew by Neptune, it was decided to extend their mission through the Voyager Interstellar Mission. The goal was to extend the exploration of the solar system beyond the outer planets, and, if possible, beyond the limits of the solar system, beyond what we call the heliopause boundary. It can be defined as the limit where the solar wind from the sun is stopped by the interstellar medium. Reaching after the heliopause will allow the space probes to make measurements of the interstellar fields, particles, and waves that are unaffected by the solar wind and thus providing scientists with invaluable data. As of today, the probes continue to send important data back to Earth. Currently, they mainly study ultraviolet sources among the stars and they explore the boundary between the Sun's influence and interstellar space. In one of its signals to Earth, Voyager 1 made a discovery that has left scientists baffled. The spacecraft picked up the signature of interstellar space itself, a faint plasma hum that experts have compared to a gentle rain. Plasma has been part of Voyager 1's mission from its launch. The spacecraft discovered lightning strikes in Jupiter's atmosphere and studied how the solar wind tapered off in the outer solar system. And since 2012, scientists have turned the spacecraft's instruments upon a completely unexplored part of distant space. That's when Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause, where the solar wind, the constant stream of charged particles that flows off the sun, is no longer strong enough to hold back the interstellar medium that surrounds our little neighborhood. Since 2012, as Voyager 1 has drifted ever farther from the sun, the spacecraft has measured the plasma around it. This part of the interstellar medium is mostly quiet. It's very faint and monotone because it is in the narrow frequency bandwidth that every few years the solar wind pushes back. Voyager 1 picks up those events as shock waves. For a time, scientists thought those shocks were the only way that Voyager 1 could measure the density of plasma out there. But now that scientists have heard this unexpected hum, they can track the interstellar medium between shocks, which can help them understand much more about a largely undiscovered expanse of space. Scientists believe there's much more low-level activity in the interstellar medium than they previously thought. This discovery means that now we know we don't need a fortuitous event related to the Sun to measure interstellar plasma. Regardless of what the Sun is doing, Voyager is sending back invaluable data about this plasma. It is detailing the density it is traveling through and records the changes in the space around it. However, shortly after this strange discovery, the probe ran into problems. The latest reports state that the engineering team with NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft is trying to solve a mystery. The interstellar explorer is operating normally, receiving and executing commands from Earth, along with gathering and returning science data. But readouts from the probe's attitude, articulation, and control system don't reflect what's actually happening on board. The AACS controls the 45-year-old spacecraft's orientation. Among other tasks, it keeps Voyager 1's high-gain antenna pointed precisely at Earth, enabling it to send data home. All signs suggest the AACS is still working, but the telemetry data it's returning is invalid. For instance, the data may appear to be randomly generated or does not reflect any possible state the AACS could be in. The issue hasn't triggered any onboard fault protection systems, which are designed to put the spacecraft into safe mode, a state where only essential operations are carried out, giving engineers time to diagnose an issue. Voyager 1 signal hasn't weakened either, which suggests the high-gain antenna remains in its prescribed orientation with Earth. The team will continue to monitor the signal closely as they continue to determine whether the invalid data is coming directly from the AACS or another system involved in producing and sending telemetry data. Until the nature of the issue is better understood, the team cannot anticipate whether this might affect how long the spacecraft can collect and transmit science data. Voyager 1 is currently 14.5 billion miles from Earth, and it takes light 20 hours and 33 minutes to travel that distance. That means it takes roughly two days to send a message to Voyager 1 and get a response, a delay the mission team is well accustomed to. Scientists are hard at work trying to explain this new mystery and believe that the data may be a result of the craft deteriorating due to age. The spacecraft are both almost 45 years old, which is far beyond what the mission planners anticipated. They also are in interstellar space, which is a high radiation environment that no spacecraft have flown in before. While this is a big challenge for the team, scientists believe if a solution to the AACS issue exists, they'll find it. 
Another possibility is that the team may not find the source of the anomaly and will instead adapt to it. If they do find the source, they may be able to solve the issue through software changes or potentially by using one of the spacecraft's redundant hardware systems. It wouldn't be the first time the Voyager team has relied on backup hardware. In 2017, Voyager 1's primary thruster showed signs of degradation, so engineers switched to another set of thrusters that had originally been used during the spacecraft's planetary encounters. Those thrusters worked, despite having been unused for 37 years. Voyager 1's twin, Voyager 2, continues to operate normally. Launched in 1977, both Voyagers have operated far longer than mission planners expected and are the only spacecraft to collect data in interstellar space. Each spacecraft produces about four fewer watts of electrical power a year, limiting the number of systems the craft can run. The mission engineering team has switched off various subsystems and heaters to reserve power for science instruments and critical systems. No science instruments have been turned off yet as a result of the diminishing power, and the Voyager team is working to keep the two spacecraft operating and returning unique science beyond 2025. While the engineers continue to work at solving the mystery that Voyager 1 has presented them, the mission scientists will continue to make the most of the data coming down from the spacecraft's unique vantage point. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about NASA's discovery of two super-Earths that could sustain life. Do you think the Voyager probes will survive the journey to a new star system? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.